How are we doing? Um, Dean here from the vaults at the Scots Mil Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Spiritual Home. Um, we've got some classic bottlings in the background, and we've got a stunning array of flavour profiles, which John McShane, our master ambassador, has selected for us for the gathering. Um, it's been a tough year uh, to gather with loved ones, um, but nothing can stop us from celebrating. Nothing can stop us from celebrating our amazing membership, uh, whether we can travel in person or not. These virtual times um, can also be a great excuse for a magic wee gathering. So enjoy everyone, and we'll be we'll be looking out for all the comments. And John will uh, will kick us off with the tasting as well today. Slanja. Hi, folks. It's great to be in touch with you all. As Dean said, very, very difficult times at the moment, but uh, I just love the idea of a gathering. We love it in Scotland because the word gathering is normally followed by of the clans, the gathering of the clans. So this is like a gathering of our members all across Europe. Apparently 600 packs have gone out, and I hope we can take you through some fantastic whiskies. I can tell you we've got two from Ayla, my gathering t-shirt hasn't arrived in the post. I'm actually in our gale at the moment, but I have a t-shirt. John, you see what it says in your t-shirt there? Can we see there? Yeah. Wild and Magic Isla. So oh, thank, oh, you. Oh, yeah. thank you for that gift, Rachel McNeil. And we're going to be from Isla, and we're going to be celebrating with two Isla whiskeys tonight. So as Dean said, let's have all of your comments. We've got quite a few different types of whiskey. We've got a few kind of cask finishes and stuff to talk about as we go through. So um, if you're going to be commenting, uh, by the way, on social media, we do have a couple of hashtags you could use. So it's easy for us to pick up. And one is uh, all together, S-M-W-S, hashtag all together, S-M-W-S. And the other one is hashtag society spirit animal. And maybe some of you have actually got a spirit animal through our little quiz that we did on site a few months ago. Now, uh, we have quite a few new members joining us tonight. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a background to Scotch Malt Whiskey Society before we actually start on a whiskey. won't take long, but we've been going since 1983, of course, 37 years. We... I've specialised in single cast, single malt, but over the years we've done lots of different things. And we've bottled uh, single cask whisky from many countries around the world. Tonight, I'm happy to tell you, it's all scotch. It's all scotch we'll be tasting tonight. Okay, so now, the thing is, the, the whisky is not chill filtered, there's no colouring, and there's no water added for dilution purposes. So this is all cast strength, of course. And also there's two ways to try our whiskey. And one is to read the tasting note before you sip the whiskey. And that means that all you'll do in your head is try to experience some of the flavor notes you've just read about. Much more fun way to do it is to see what you get and then look at the tasting note because yeah. everybody's palate will give them something different. There are two types of tasting note. There's a direct tasting note and the indirect tasting note. So a direct tasting note will just be an aroma that you recognize, a flavor, as fruit, what type of fruit is it, the cooked fruit, raw fruit, or whatever. But sometimes you can get something very, very personal, which is an indirect tasting note, but just reminds you very personally, of a time and a place. And in fact, if you look at that, I'll tell you that once, once we've tasted this one, I'll tell you what comes out of that tasting note rather than tell you right now. But here we'll go with uh, 26, 26, 145, mood lifting. This is a Highland malt, okay? Usually used for blends. Many blends will carry this particular one. And we have a we have actually got the, the the new make spirit. There you go. There you go. Dean's showing you that there. And we have matured this in a second fill 
bourbon barrel, you know. Most of you will know, the new members might be getting to grips with the idea that the new make spirit, that every distillery is very different, and it's what we do with it afterwards that can make an incredible difference. Our last 20 bottlings of this spirit, this whiskey, with it, all of the various different flavour profiles involved, except the peaty ones. Nine flavour profiles. And that's down to what we can do with the new mix spirit that we get during maturation. Okay? Now, let's go. Okay, let's try this one. But remember, some of you I know, I get told this all over the world where I go, some of you just do not like adding water. But the thing is, you don't know what you might be missing. So always try a little water to see how it changes the flavour. But let's go for it neat first, and you can tell us what you think the whiskey is giving you. And thanks to Nadja and Jens in Frankfurt. I've just seen them joining there. Great to hear from you. I've got a special mention for you two later on. Yeah, John, um, we're, we're talking, everyone, hi again. It's the, uh, John and I were talking just before the, we went live today about, about the lineup. And um, starting off with a 26, John, eight years again, another eight year old from this distillery. And again, proven, just proven the fact that, you know, Cash strength, single malt whiskies, uh, the, the majority of the output that we provide at the society, younger can sometimes often be the most, the more popular whiskies, John, amongst members. You know, the younger ones are great value. Yeah, yeah. It's a stunning example of the make right away and waxy sweet. I think it's, um, that's a great point, Dean, because we don't just bottle uh, some of the, the very, very well-known ages, the 10, 12, 15, 18, 21. We will bottle when the, we believe the whiskey is ready for bottling, and sometimes the young whiskies have just been fantastic, and this is one of those. Yeah, so juicy, just juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. Yeah, juicy oak and vanilla opening us up, John. Um, we called it mood lift on the tasting panel, John. Mood lifting sanctuary. Yes, yes. Yes. What I, want, I mean, in the times that everybody globally, all, all our membership base around the world, what everybody's been through the last few months, mood lifting sanctuary says that, oh, that's, that's, as, that's as good a wee opener as a title and as a whiskey that we can all share virtually and, and, and with each other, hopefully a little bit more often socially over the next coming months as well. Gary, bang on there, orange and vanilla, a very, very... Uh, they are flavour notes which you will often get from juicy oak and vanilla. Gary Wilson, Slanger, yeah, absolutely, Tangerine Dream. Yeah, absolutely. Can I read? Now, what, what I said right at the beginning was that in, in our tasting note, someone actually said it's like smoking a cigar outside a forest. <laughs> now that that is this, that's the great thing of this whiskey. It can actually take you back to a moment. And, uh, and someone was enjoying a cigar outside a forest once upon a time. And this reminded him of that, that experience, that moment in time, that moment in time. I was doing a tasting act just a couple of weeks ago like this live, and I found myself telling people that I was listening to a Joan Baez record on a veranda overlooking Lake Como. <laughs> so don't worry about it. If, it. if it gives you something which is very personal to you, that will be right for you. That's tremendous. Here, and, here. and it's always what we've been also looking at the distillation date because often that can be something which is important in your own life. Something 100%, you're John. 19th yeah. of September 2011. There was a member uh, to everybody who attended the gathering at the, the vaults um, here in Edinburgh yesterday. We had the marquee downstairs um, for a lot of more free-flowing air. We had a good number of people socialising upstairs in the large members' room. And Mood Lifting Sanctuary, John, the 26, was, what was, was one of the most popular in terms of bottles uh, people were looking to purchase. Because of that value, eight years, eight years, cash strength single malt from Distillery 26. Um, only 239 bottles in existence, second fill bourbon. And as John mentioned earlier on, everyone, Juicy oak and vanilla all the way home. It's absolutely, it's gorgeous. Eight years, in my opinion, one of my favorites off the new outturn. 
Definitely butchering, butchering creamy Nadja and Jens. Yeah, very a great mouthfeel on here. Great yeah. Meal. Yeah, waxy, but so juicy, mouth coating yes. and sweet, isn't it? Hi, Edie from Malaysia. Edie. You're, you're tuning in from a long way away. Nice to, nice to hear from you. So I'm going to add a little reduction, everyone, but as, as John was mentioning earlier on, um, always worth trying neat any whiskey that's put in front of you that we're fortunate to have, especially, as John says, society... Um, cash strength single malt whiskies worth trying neat see what your palate um, takes to it and then if you're going to add water as John has mentioned numerous times before you you know common sense you don't want to kill it so little by little little wee teardrops raindrops and see how it opens up and John you just mentioned the, the rainforest analogy earlier on with cigars I tried this with water yesterday, pine needles, cones, forest, the outdoors, the outdoors of which a lot of us are trying to utilize a lot more these days. Um, cycle rides and all the rest of it. There's a certain spicy smokiness about it too, Dean, which I, uh, which I certainly enjoy. And there's a little bit of pepperiness there too. Yeah, for yeah. Me, for me. Yeah, a very pleasant yeah, pepperiness. Yeah, love that texture. Right, Daniel? It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, well said, Daniel. Now, folks, let me tell you this. Um, when I said at the beginning, Marco, all of the, all of the whiskies were Scotch. All the whiskies are Scotch, and you know, whiskies made all over the world now. And we have uh, we bottled lots of whiskey from different parts of the world. But those of you who know a guy called Michael Jackson, not that one, the guy who wrote books about whiskey uh, until he passed a few years ago, and Michael once said. Scotch is the only drink in the world that you can ask for anywhere in the world by reference to its nation of birth alone. Yeah. Not Scotland or Scottish, but Scotch. If you say to a barman anywhere in the world with like a Scotch, he knows exactly what you mean. You don't even have to use the word whiskey. Isn't that fantastic? A little country like this. Great. Yeah, well said. 100%. Anywhere you go in the world. Anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, by the way, folks, I also forgot to say, I mean, Dean introduced himself earlier, right? Dean Marinello. And there might be one or two of you out there don't know that whenever I do a tasting, I don't need much of an excuse to get a mention of the world-famous Partick Thistle Football Club into the conversation. Right. Yes, right. Well, Dean's uncle, Peter Marinello, a famous Scottish footballer back in the 80s, 70s and 80s. And he played for both Edinburgh teams, Hibs and Hearts. He Arsenal. Played and Arsenal, played for Portsmouth. But he finished off his career with the Partick Thistle Football Club. Well done, Peter. Fantastic. Here's to you. Hi, <laughs> Uncle Peter. John, fantastic. Earlier on, you were mentioning if, if you could let, let, let everyone know that the reasoning, number 10 is the second whiskey of the day. Yes. I tried it for the first time today. Gorgeous. We have, we, have, yeah. we have two PT whiskeys on the list tonight. Now, there'll be a tendency a little bit just to throw the two PT ones in at the end because you tend to have the PT whiskey in at the end. But I think that it serves each of them better to split them up a little bit, taste the peatiness in its own right, and then split it up with different flavours in between. So unusually then, for a SMWS tasting, and we like to try different things and do stuff that might uh, give you some sort of excitement and interest, we're going to the peaty one first, okay? This is from Ayla, okay? And it's only six years old. Let's see what you think of that. I was actually talking a few years ago to a couple of very, very well-known people from a famous Isla distillery who normally bottles from 10 years old onwards. And they said, one of them said to me, I think my favourite whiskey from the distillery where he worked was eight years old. And the other chap who also worked for the company said, my favourite is nine years old. 
that we bottled at 10 years old because that's what we've always done. Yep. So sometimes you can get flavours from a younger whisky that you might not have experienced in the proprietary whiskies bottled at 10 years, 12 years. Okay. So let's have a, let's have a little go at this one. Six years, John. Six years. It's incredible. Again, everyone, sorry. This is the first first nose and first taste I've had of this um, of this whiskey today. Uh, I didn't do any research on the number ten. It was a wee surprise, a wee treat. I knew John was throwing in it early in the tasting. Cast number ten point one nine five. Shiver me timbers. If you've all got your little tasting notes or tasting mats at home. Hope you're enjoying. Um, and John, a beauty it, for a second whiskey of a tasting. We were mentioning to each other earlier on. We like to do things a little differently, a little bit curious, a little bit adventurous now and again with our, our, our malts and our spirits, single cast spirits at the society. And I'm glad you put that as a number two. Yeah, it's got everything was sweet, rich, and decadent for maybe something to do with the HTMC cask. What's very interesting about that, Dean, is that the heavy toast, medium char cask. That we've moved it into after the bourbon barrel. That uh, that charring and the toasting can create a whole different series of layers of flavour. Absolutely. Uh, whether it's heavy toasted, whether it's light toasted, some light toasting can bring out the vanillins, the vanilla. Heavy toasting can help to suppress that, bring out more spicy, smoky yep. flavours. So what's happened here, I believe, is that the heavy toast medium char have just created a whole wave smoky, spicy type flavours on this, which you can get alongside the peat. 100%. They, John, brilliant. I'm, 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 everyone, I'm waiting for him to say something that isn't 100% correct today. He start, even Partick Thistle's included in that. <laughs> I think by the time we get to the fifth whiskey, we might try and see if we can catch him out, everyone. But John, ge genuinely, though, absolute word there again, mate. The... Um, if, you, if everyone at home, if you're tasting notes, if, you, if, if you've got them in front of you, you'll notice, again, the detail, the attention to detail we're, we're providing at the society with these new array of casks that we're, we've, we've been fortunate enough to acquire um, since gaining our new independence again. Matured for four years in a bourbon hogshead before being transferred to, as John was just discussing there, a heavily toasted medium charred hogshead. Not everyone, John, needs to give out those exact details, but the society over the last couple of years with these different casks um, maturations and the, the types of different cask that we've got uh, in, our, in our acquisition now, it, it's great to see that detail. For members at home, especially virtually, that can't get access to the venues, and, okay, they can't speak to an ambassador, they can't speak at tastings amongst each other, at home they get that exact detail. You know, four years in the bourbon hogshead, and then we'll tell them that we've transferred it to that HTMC. I really, a, a lot of people I think, I, I know that I speak to, they really appreciate that attention to detail. Absolutely, absolutely. And it also, it's a great demonstration, Dean, of what we can actually do with a new make spirit to make something more of it. Because we've got 12 flavour profiles, and many of our whiskies will come in different flavour profiles depending on what we've done with the maturation, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, on this flavour, on, on this particular distillery, we've had mainly mainly oily and coastal, has to be said, but we've had a couple of peats and other, other flavour profiles too. So probably a total of six different flavour profiles. So we can we can actually work with that new week spirit and you as a member can come into a venue, come into a partner bar, go online and buy a couple of the whiskies from the same distillery, mature differently to get that experience of what the maturation provides. Yeah. 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 Totally. I mean, I get Bernard Crump there, John's just mentioning. I don't usually expect this distillery to be so peaty. And that's because they don't they don't always make peaty whiskey, Bernard. No, they split their production between mainly non-peated and peated, you know. So you, you, you're absolutely right. It's, 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 it's relatively unusual. You know, yeah. you know the, the, some, sometimes, sometimes I don't get... Uh, a light peatiness on the nose. So I think it's because I've spent so many years drinking heavily peated stuff, and sometimes I don't get the lighty, lightly peated, peated stuff. I get some of the other flavors. I'm getting this. Yeah. They say that your olfactory senses start to decline when you get to your 60s. 
So I'll let you know if that happens in 20 years' time or so forth. <laughs> 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 I think we meant... Sorry, Dean, you've stopped. Okay, folks, Dean, Dean is temporarily... Ewan, you, oh, I, I don't know how you pronounce that, Ewan, but you're not even reaching for the water, and I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. This, this, this whiskey just tastes fantastic, as it is, you know? And that's uh, that's always a danger that when you put a little bit of water, you may have spoiled it for yourself, especially if you've only got one glass. If you've got a bottle, you can obviously drink the rest of it neat if you think you've spoiled it. But, uh, but it's always that question, if you don't add a little bit of water, if you want to open it up a little bit, it's uh, I mean the 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 strength is fifty nine point eight percent. If you don't open up a little bit, you might be missing something. You know, you might be missing yeah. the in the flavour. Yeah, totally, with John. The uh, I've just added a little reduction myself there for the first time, and again, it just it just transports you. Um, straight into straight into the beautiful wee island that we know well of Isla, and I know John's got a lot of fans over in Isla, not only through the whiskey society, but through the industry as a whole. And John is the second whiskey in the lineup. I'm now fully understanding why you've put that there right off the bat. And number two, yeah. it's rich. I mean, yeah, there, there is there is the there is the classic peatiness from the peated range of malt and moin that they do at this distillery, but once you get past that peat, there is a decadence and sweetness. Um, crystallized ginger. Uh, I mean, I'm going on to various kinds of different types of so soya sauces. My flatmate and I here in Edinburgh, we like um, our, our Bragg uh, amino acids. If anyone out there uses that with their cooking, I know David Lynch, the director, I'm a big fan of. He 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 goes wild with his whiskey at home and re referencing what he gets on the nose is a lot of soy from a lot of these peated whiskies, and, and I'm getting that from that as well as a lot of rich sweet. Uh, sugary black coffees, a bit of everything. And I think if, yeah, sure. if, you, can, if you can just let everybody know there, it's unusual to put a peated whiskey at number two, but it's Absolutely. working. Absolutely. And I think it's um, below the peat there, there's, there's a lot of different things. I mean, there's a, I think there's a slight bit of antiseptic uh, flavours in there because often you expect that from Isla peats in particular. It might be there, but Dean, yeah, I'd agree with much of what you said there. And a Daniel saying lovely bit of dark chocolate and smoky. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Daniel, yeah, Mr. Flex, Danny, good to hear from you there. Um, better dark chocolate and, and yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, again, I don't see anybody asking or, or saying why is there a PT whiskey so early in the lineup? Everyone seems to be everyone seems to be getting the ball rolling with that. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I mean, I mean, Dean was talking there about Isla, and I don't think anybody who's ever been to that island hasn't really kind of fallen in love with it, particularly whiskey people for obvious reasons, you know. It's just a fantastic, fantastic island. You know, when you, when you, if you ever, if you've never been to Isla, when you get there, uh, if you're on a car, the first thing you'll notice is that everybody who drives past you waves at you. You've got to wave to everybody. And if you don't wave, they'll know you're a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> so it's someone, so, it's so true. If you don't wave, they'll know that you're a tourist. Right. Someone said to me, "But won't your arm get sore with all that waving?" I said, "Not an eye that one. Three thousand people. You don't have to wave that much, you know. You know, and life is so much slower there. Very much slower. I was in a I was in a bar in Bulmore a few years ago, and there was a conversation going on at the bar between two two men." One was a local man who spoke Gaelic, uh, Scottish Gaelic. Another chap was a Spanish gentleman who was on a whiskey tour. And they were trying to have a conversation in English. And eventually the Spanish chap said to the Gael, said, is there a word in your language which is the same as our manana, manana? And the local man thought for a second or two and stroked his chin. Said, you know, I don't think we've got anything in our language with quite that sense of urgency. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what life is like in Isla. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience, you know. And this whiskey takes me right back to, as Dean was saying, 
it just transports you, transports you right there. Uh, overlooking, looking over to Jura, yeah, yeah. Just transports you straight there. Yeah, the um, six years, John, incredible. Again, what we were saying earlier on about some of these younger casks, incredible. Yeah, I know, I know, amazing, amazing. So remember this, folks. Uh, there is no single chemical proposition for whiskey. So there's no one can tell you exactly what's going to happen uh, when you take that whiskey from the cask and put, put water in it in your glass, you know. So it's a wonderful thing to, to try and get to know, full of new experiences and wonderful aromas, particularly in a society with such a range of whiskies and differently treated to get different flavours. Now, now, if everybody's uh, enjoyed that one, let's move on to uh, here we go with 7243. Now, some of you some of you may well have uh, looked at this looked at the treatment of it by us and thought, what is going on there? Eh, what's going on? That's two casks put into another cask, you know? So the, over over the many years of our existence, we have done a lot of uh, experimentation, innovation with different types of casks, different flavours. A few years ago, uh, when we started extra maturing, a uh, single cask and a different type of cask, people said, wait a minute, that's not a single cask. I said, well, it is. It's, with, it's the whiskey following from one cask to another. Um, but this is Taylor said, but we'd done that before, way back in the early 90s we'd done that. You know, it's not something that we did that was new, nor is this new. This is two bourbon casks, distilled on the same day, the two of the bourbon casks, then switched to a first fill sherry butt. Now, remember when you are so, and we'll probably do more of this, and these flavours I think you're going to discover are fantastic. And what you have, remember when you're tasting single cask and malt whiskey, what you're trying to do uh, is you're trying to get what the new make spirit flavours were and how those flavours have changed and developed through the maturation process. So you can get okay, I can get the new mix spirit from that distillery, I recognise it, and I can see what the second fill bourbon barrel has done, or whatever. Now here, you've got a chance to try and get your palate to recognise new mix spirit, bourbon cask effect, and then a sherry cask effect. Yeah. So I mean, it's very, very interesting. Let's go. Gorgeous. Yeah, as John said, everyone, we've created two such casks. Um, and look out for cask number 7.244 uh, so that branches around the world, this Scotch Malt Whiskey Society branches around the world, will get the chance to try these special creations and appreciate the fine flavor balance from the bourbon, as John was saying, from the bourbon and sherry cask influences with a wonderful oily mouth coating texture. Um, Twinning, John. Absolutely twinning. Absolutely, absolutely. The sherry, sherry cask maturation, extra maturation, will normally give you uh, rich fruits uh, and fruit cake and that kind of thing. So there's definitely a bit of that in here. Now, this is a uh, 24. What was, it, was it this distillation date? 16 years old, and it was yeah. old on uh, where was yeah. it? The 26th of May, 2003. Right, 26, 16 years, 15 years we combined, as John was saying, guys, we've combined the two second fill bourbon barrels, originally filled on the same exact day, um, into a first fill Pedro Jimenez butt cask for an additional maturation. It's... Words need, words need... Say no more when it comes to some whiskies like this, John, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's just so... I mean... And remember that this is, we, we, we could try that again, two bourbon barrels and a sherry cask, and it will never be quite the same. I yeah. just think this, this is astonishing. It's astonishing. It really is. And, and you and uh, our good friend, you and you and Campbell, who many people will know um, here at the Society, our whiskey manager, 
it, 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 I was just reading out a, a small little comment of his on that there earlier with the wonderful oily mouth quitting texture, which John and I have spoken before the tasting today, completely in agreement with. Um, but as John was saying, everyone, it's not what we all say the whiskey or the single cast spirit, whatever it is you have in front of you from the society. It's not what we say that is the ultimate um, it's the ultimate word on it. As John's always said to many members around the world, and we hear it at tastings here in the UK, whiskey, you know, it's not only, our tasting notes are there for a purpose. It's there for a guide. It's there for also a little storytelling as well, which is a, which is a, a, a great little part of the society and what we do. But really, as everyone will know, it's about what you yourself get from that whiskey. So when, when John and I say wonderful, oily, mouth-coating texture or agree with each other on some points, we'll also have completely different um, takes on our whiskey in front of us. Because John, as you've always said, a, a whiskey is, a single cask is like a human being, isn't it? I mean, we're all, we're all unique in our own way and we'll take to a whiskey in our own way. I think, I think that's one of just the, the wonderful things about it. I mean, you can travel from distillery to distillery across Scotland, look at the setup and the process, sounds very similar. The whiskey, the new make spirit is different from the same distillery for another distillery half a mile down the road. And yeah. they have a great story, which I'll maybe get around to telling you someday, about where they have tried to replicate a new make spirit from one distillery next door almost and haven't been able to. And science can't quite understand it. Science knows more than it ever did before, but still, I think some of the real whiskey experts say that we don't even know half of it yet. I mean, that whole thing you hear about the cask giving the whiskey 70% of its flavour, well, no one could really put a figure on that, you know? And what the cask is really doing is working with these existing flavours and breaking them up and making new compounds for flavours, not necessarily adding more, you know? It's just a fascinating journey. I mean, I could just sit and sniff this one all night. It's just it's, fantastic. Yeah, 100%, yeah. And so, and so some, somebody said the other, but not putting water in it. And this, is, this is another one, which I know some of you might be a bit reticent about putting water in because it's just... Yeah, absolutely, John. And Ian Duff there, it did work. This had enough character to follow the great PT one. Well done. Yeah, superb, John. After, after that HTMC young uh, number 10... Going on to this has just been a has been a, a, a nearly swore there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it has been it has been a very it's been a, a smooth transition. But the, I think it's a, the I mean it is full of rich fruits, you know. But you're still getting I think still vanilla and toffee coming through from the previous cask casks, and and then he, and you've even got that sweet fruity new make spirit flavour from this particular distillery. This distillery is quite, quite a little story to tell, actually. Some of you will know already, but some of you may not know that Masataka Takitsuru, who is known as the father of Japanese whiskey, came to study chemistry at Glasgow University just after the First World War, with the intention of learning all about whiskey and taking it back, go back to Japan and making whiskey there. And this distillery was one of the ones he went and worked in for his personal experience. And he married a girl from Kirkintilach, where I used to live. And he took her back to Japan. So, and the, she was known as the mother, actually, of Japanese whiskey. He was the father. But he, when he built Yoichi Distillery, yeah. Yeah. he said that Yoichi was a copy of Longmore, you know, because that's yeah. where he got his experience and his ideas from. And yeah. uh, so, in, in fact, and there's still, um, I was there, I was at Yoichi last year, and they've still got the house where he lived on the grounds of distillery preserved as a kind of little memorial to he and Rita from Kirkintilach, who built Yoichi. So quite a fantastic story. But uh, this, 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 this whiskey is also one of those whiskies which the blenders will kill for. Gathered so well. Top dressing, John. Top dressing. Top dressing. Top dressing. Yeah, brilliant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone who's, who's who's tuning in and listening, what John just said there about this distillery and the character from this distillery, 
they're so consistent with their spirit that as, as John just mentioned, everyone around the industry regards it as top dressing in terms of spirit, in terms of quality of whiskey. And for us, John, to be able to have two, two barrels, um, both on the same day where we've, where we've combined um, twinning, 7.243, uh, the, two first, the two, first, two second fill, excuse me, two second fill bourbon barrels, and then into a first fill PX sherry butt cask. Uh, you know, why not? John and I have said before we went live today, we do do things a little differently. We do, we do try we do try things. We do try and be a little bit creative and adventurous within strict guidelines that are there for a reason that John will, tell, will inform everybody throughout the world that his tastings, the, the, the SWA there, SWA are there for a very specific reason and it helps the industry. It's a positive, it's a force for good, but we are allowed to be slightly creative amongst amongst those regulations. And, th and this one, this one is a great tribute to you and Campbell and our spirits team who've created this effectively, you know? So a wonderful, wonderful example of, you, you know, like I often say to people um, that uh, people think, you know, single cask, single malt, or you know, stuff like that the, the society do, this is something you graduate to after like a ladder of experience through blends and single malts and stuff. But in fact, if you really are on a whiskey journey, we are better to start in a place where you can really experience the flavours that come from different types of cask. Yeah. So, so that when you go to a single malt, which is a mix of lots of different types of cask sometimes, you can start to identify in that single malt where the individual parts of the flavour have come from. And you can do that better if you are, if you've educated your palate in what different flavours from different types of casks involve, you know. So, yeah, so this is just the oh, is just wonderful, this. It and really I, is. Funny. Um, I've, not, I've not added any reduction yet, have you? I've, I've not even yeah, added any water yet. I'm, just, I'm going to go in now with a wee, a wee teardrop or two. And I'm pleased to say, I'm pleased to say, for that I bought a bottle. Oi, oi, that makes two of us there twinning then, because yeah, <laughs> I've got a lot of members in Edinburgh here saying, well, you can get it back, Dean, because it's, there's, there's, there's hardly any left. Yeah, it's been going great, Guns. It's like hotcakes, the, the cast number 7.243. Yeah. Just so we mentioned, John, for, for, for a lot of our newer members over uh, that have since joined the society, um, either just before lockdown or during lockdown, our online members room, um, our dear colleague and friend, uh, Richard Goslin, has, has managed to organize, uh, along with Mads and the rest of the team, uh, smws.com slash blog slash members room you, you'll get it on your website on, on some of the main front pages but smws.com slash blog slash members dash room and that blog will not only be blog in terms of articles and written word it will give you a portal into everything in terms of uh, archives unfiltered outturn and members goings ons and, and getting togethers around the world virtually so do look into the the online members room everyone and uh, it's a great point that because if you talk, we talked about. I mentioned a whiskey journey earlier, and people are always trying to learn more about whiskey. And our members' room is a great source of information, you know. And even even looking back in some of the old unfiltered, can tell you an awful lot about a particular distillery or whatever. Fantastic, you know. There's Dean showing you around the vaults now. The first time I've ever been in here solo. I'm hoping, Jan, I'm, hope, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping Jan isn't, uh, this is all above board, guys. But yeah, no, just a fantastic experience. A, re a real wee sanctuary today to have uh, private access inside our members room. But as John will say, the members room only comes alive when we've actually got everyone here together. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, also online, folks, remember this. So, so some people are very confident. And, and we've seen that this evening. Some people have been making great comments about flavours and aromas. And other people feel a little bit less inclined because they're not quite sure uh, if, they, if they're getting it right or whatever. And the most important thing is that there's no right and wrong about tasting notes. It's very personal. I happened to read the other day with you this. Yeah. A, human, a human being has, what was it, five million 
olfactory cells. A sheepdog is 220 million. So we're thinking of getting a couple of sheepdogs on the panel. <laughs> 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 but, the, but the thing is, is that everybody, as I said before, will get something different. Some people don't have a clear ability to taste certain types of flavour. But what you can get on the, the site is one of these things. This is the Chinese version or the Japanese version. There's a, something like this. You get a thing for all of our flavour profiles. And yeah. they will give you typical types of aromas and flavors for each flavor profile yeah typical that doesn't mean that every flavor profile that you every whiskey you get in that flavor profile will have these tastes but it might give you an idea an in so you can actually start to try and kind of if, you, if you're worried about it if you're new to the society and worried about how what is that i am actually experiencing on my nose and on my palate then maybe that will give you a bit of a clue and before you know it in a few months you'll be talking like an expert yeah like yeah, Dean. Like so, but the but the, but the other the other thing I was going to say was um, a, about uh, yeah, what's a fascinating thing also to look at is how many bottles we got from each cask and what the strength of the alcohol is because mm -hmm. everyone is reacting differently depending on where it's maturing and how much is evaporating and all of that kind of thing, you know. So. Yeah. Something amazing when you get two whiskies of a similar age from a similar size of cask, and the results are completely different. Amazing, isn't it? No, nothing is the same in whisky. Everything has got slight twists and turns to it. It's the same as the New Make Spirit. I was at a, a talk, a whisky talk, a few years ago in London. There was a distillery manager from a very famous distillery talking there. We were talking about how much is craft and how much is actually place in terms of the whiskey, so craft versus terroir sort of thing. And as, as you know, there's a whole ongoing debate about terroir and whiskey, yeah. whether it actually is a factor, whether it's not. But one of this, this distillery manager said, every distillery has a thousand little quirks. Something that Joe, who's been working there for 40 years, has always done, but he learned it from Harry when he took over. 35 years ago, you know. So these little quirks help to create the soul and the personality of Scotch whiskey. And when we get it, we get it. We then carry that on with the maturation regimes. Fantastic. Yeah. Well said, John, yet again. So who, who enjoyed that one then? See, he's got a bit of water in. Yeah, he likes, he likes this particular flavour profile. Yeah. Vanilla caramel and raisins, absolutely. See, that's great, Ian, because you're getting the vanilla from probably from the bourbon cask and the raisins from the sherry, you know? Yeah, there's the twinning element right there, John, isn't yes. it? Yes, absolutely. And I think uh, that the, a wee shout-out to Billy here, uh, one of our colleagues at SMWS, um, a good Dundee United man. The opening tasting note of this one, Billy, says, fresh tangerines. <laughs> I, I was mentioning Tangerine Dream earlier when I was looking through it. When you look at the color of the whiskey and, and you're, you're taking your time with it and appearance in the glass, I was thinking of Billy earlier with that Tangerine Dream that we've got in front of us. Yeah, you know. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something, Billy. I don't, know, I don't know how old you are, but back in 1987, I was so proud of your team in the final of the UEFA Cup. And it was tragic that they got beaten over two legs, uh, the second leg being at Tannadice. But the, the D United fans, to a man, stood and cheered off uh, the Scandinavian team that beat them. I can't remember, was it, was it Gotham? I can't remember who it was. Yeah. Who probably will. But see, I think they actually got awarded the FIFA. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Brilliant. For all those who are not so interested in soccer, football, um, <laughs> What we will say is, is that, yeah, we take a keen interest in it, many of us here at Society, now and again, but because we're not very good at it, <laughs> John said, when we get applauded off the pitch, sometimes it's because we're, we're getting applauded for being so bad. But we do, as a small country, as John was saying, in relation to soccer, football, whiskey, for such a small nation, we, uh, we travel the world and we, and, we, and we can do it well, John. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, you, you, you used to be quite good. <laughs> yeah, well, that that a hundred percent. I yeah, I missed those days. Yeah. Number thirty-five, John. Point two five nine. Yeah, 35259. Now, this is, a, this is another, <clears throat> another space side distillery. And this distillery actually used to be a cousin of ours in our long history. We're, we're completely independent again and have been since for five years now. But we, for a while, we were owned by a bigger whiskey company, and so was this distillery. So we were very, very close to them. And they were also very, very well known for experimentation with different types of cask during the course of their, their, their life, you know, and they produced some fantastic stuff, really. We've had, we've had sweet fruity mellow, we've had deep, deep rich dried fruits, we've had juicy oak vanilla, we've had old and dignified. And this one is from a sweet fruity and mellow uh, flavor profile. And we're talking 53.5%, but it's 24 years old. Yeah. 24 years old. Yeah, that having to operate remotely, John, um, is a nod to the strange times we're, we're experiencing at the moment, but also to demonstrate that we're, we're in it together with members. And uh, on this number, cast number 35.249, um, John knows them very well. We, 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 we want to say hi to every, every single name going, but just a wee shout out to the SMWS DK branch, Terrier and Thomas, um, and all the ambassadors over in Denmark, missing you guys through these times. And I think, John, I think it'd be quite appropriate to say the gathering which originated at the, the vaults, our first one last year, is a wee nod to what the, our society branch in Denmark had already been doing with festival and venue and getting people together from not only around Denmark, from all over the world. And the gathering, which we're going to continue doing over these next few years, we would like to hope, is a wee nod to Denmark because what they were doing in Viola uh, and John knows the team very well over there. The, the gathering here at the vaults and now virtually, it's a wee nod to SMWS, DK and all, and all our branches throughout Europe and the rest of the world, John, because everybody's ganging together and trying to do their own events, you know? I was, I was absolutely, that's brilliant, Dean. I was absolutely delighted to be uh, in Denmark when they launched way back in 2012. It was a particular festival they launched that and I've always been close to them ever since. I just love visiting Denmark. Amazing, amazing people, you know. And in fact, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody has noticed the watch I'm wearing. There's probably about three of you have never seen this watch. There it is. And John, by the way, it never misses a beat. Never misses a beat. And that watch was a gift to me by Rene Lorson. Uh, it was very, very closely connected to our Danish branch. Thank you, Danny. I'm always, I'm always posting photographs of from airports and stuff. And yeah, well done. And I, I was over, I was over in Denmark uh, for the festival just at the end of January this year, before everything kind of collapsed. So uh, once again, we had a wonderful time. Pip Hills was there, our founder. Uh, Kai was over as well. We, we, had a, we had a wonderful time. Jan was there. Gregor was there. Yeah, I more, more SM, more SMWS people from Scotland and Denmark at that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but John, people from all over, weren't there? Yeah, that's, that's, right, that's right. People that's from right. all over. That's right. That's right. Yeah, um, yeah. Porsville Bourbon Barrel, John, on the yeah. uh, sweet, fruity, and mellow profile. Now, right. now, what I was going to say, what happens to a lot of our members around the world is that we have tasting notes, which our panel here come up with. Now, often that panel, because of where we are, just happens to contain a lot of Scots people. Although occasionally we have other people from other countries. And sometimes we make tasting notes which people in other countries say, what is that? What is that? <laughs> so, for example, in the last one, I don't know if anybody noticed, we had Moffat Toffee. Yes, that was a wee nod to uh, Mr. T, yeah. I believe. Yeah, so Moffat is a little town in the borders in Scotland, and they make toffee, Moffat toffee. How are we supposed to know that in some other part of the world? Well, look at the name of this one. So this has got, this has got, Neil, this, this has got Dean and I flummoxed. 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think someone in our organization here, no, Andrew, not quite with this, Andrew. Great to see you, by the way, Andrew. Uh, now, I think we referred to it last night in the pub night, or Friday night in pub night, is Boozy Dessert. Oh, yes, John. Yeah, the virtual pub, the virtual pub yes. night. Now, my yeah. good friends from Frankfurt in Germany, Nadja uh -huh. and Jens, emailed me after that to say, Rum Top is... <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, I've lost my note of it, right? It's, uh, it was a... Is this with regards to the tasting note, John? Like with their, their tasting notes? Rum top partic uh, particularly. Nadja, will you write that in again? I, oh, no, yeah, I've got it here. It's fruits marinated in rum and sugar. Yeah. Does that not sound delightful? Fruits like marinated in rum top. Rum that, top. That sounds oh. exactly what I would... That's, that sounds like what I would like to have in the, in the pub with you, John, whether it's virtual <laughs> or whether, it, whether it's virtual or whether it's not. But, yeah, like a big rum pot. I'm not quite sure what burning, brought and stolen is, but that's rum top for you, okay? So, so I think if we ever if we get to the point, maybe sometime in the future, of our 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 members from other countries maybe writing their own tasting notes, then as as I say, yes. Dean and I's turn to be baffled. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, we can forget the whiskey quite a few years ago called whiskey flavored condoms and oh, I, know. I know. I know. Only in the society could that actually make sense. And it did, it did make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not, not said. Everybody not globally. Expecting more Christmas flavors from the name, but it's tasting in a different way. I'm getting, well, well I, have to, I have to say, I'm getting a little bit of Christmassy stuff in there, Nadja. It's definitely. Oh, yeah. get, get, I'm getting quite a lot of uh, well, well, sweet raisins and like burnt banana. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a little kind of a uh, rum liqueur, I think, playing around there as well. Oh, by the way, we also seen a tasting note. This one is to be enjoyed in the boudoir. So I'll leave that to you to interpret. <laughs> the is to be enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, wherever your boudoir is these days. Hey, that's um, right, that's in, right. in these but I'm sure we've all, we've all got one. We've all got our happy place somewhere, don't we? We haven't, we haven't, we haven't got. Uh, we haven't got. We're not reached the watershed yet, so leave that to your imagination. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well said, everyone. They from from all of you uh, near and far, especially those of you around Europe and Eastern Asia. In Australia, Matt and Andrew and the whole team over in Oz. Um, to all of like we we talk about that a lot, John, and you and you 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 get involved in all of these throughout your global tastings and, and managing to meet a lot of our partner bars. The tasting notes themselves can sometimes not even make sense to those of us in Scotland, never mind anywhere else in the world. But that's right, that's right. That's with right. some peculiar society adventure, it always ends up making sense in the end when think, you start yeah. discuss, when you start sharing it and discussing it with others. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Dean. I think that's down to us. Michael, hello there, Michael. Tell us what Burnbrot is. It's a Swiss pastry with dried pears. Burnbrot. That, yeah. Burnbrot. That's, got, that, that's, that's good. That's, I'm getting some of that stuff, you know. But Michael, it's, uh, I wish you could it, transport that to us right now. As Dean said... Uh, you know, some of these tasting notes might not make any sense because remember the man who's writing them may have injected a little bit of his own uh, memory in there, you know. And creative license, John, a wee bit creative of adventure license. and a little bit of storytelling, which is also what we're about, huh? One of, one of, one of, the, one of the chaps involved with us in terms of chairman of a tasting panel is a Robin Lane, who is known, known as the Whiskey Bard and is famous for writing and singing, performing whiskey songs. Around uh, this country and and in Europe particularly, although I know he's gone to Australia as well. But he actually wrote a lot. Of, he's got a book called The Space the The, the Whiskey River, which is all about space side whiskey uh, distilleries. And on that distillery number seven, when he was there, he was talking about how he actually got a feeling from a previous moment in time and place uh, from that, that distillery. Quite fantastic. And there was also, also a little story. There's a guy who used to write books in Scotland, but it was called David Dykes. David Dykes, D-A-I-C-H-E-S. 
Yeah. I think David probably might no longer, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And it was years and years ago he wrote these books. But he was there once, 1967. And they gave him, in the warehouse, a whiskey from 1899. It was 68 years old. Imagine that, eh? He said it, he said it was quite nice. Incredible. I mean, the... Fifth, what, John, on this one here, we're we're going on to what first felt twenty four years. Yeah. Um, cash trend, single cash, single malt, fifty three point five percent. John, sweet spot on the ABV there. Yeah, absolutely. See, but, look at that. Only how many bottles did we get there? We got two hundred twenty two. Yeah. It's not a bad performance that after twenty four years, but it's lost ten percent of its alcohol. You know, it's quite a long time. You've been a first fill bourbon barrel as well. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant, John. Can you can you inform everybody there? Like that that is quite and to be able to manage quite a tight cask that for after twenty four years of a first fill bourbon. Yeah. Well, what what happens, folks, is that most whiskey and most new make spirit in Scotland goes into cask at sixty three point five percent. Yeah, there are sort of historical reasons for that. Um. But after it comes out of the, it's obviously during the time of maturation, some of the what the volume of the of the, of the liquid in the cask is evaporating, you know, and that's and the oxygen's coming in, and that's what's causing all of these reactions. So over time, you expect more and more of it to have been lost, and it's always quite interesting to see: is this particular cask lost more water than? Is it lost more alcohol than it should? Is it lost more water than it should? Because that will just depend on the nature of the cask, where it was stored, yeah, house, all that kind of thing. So, I mean, there's, there's no direct signs to it, but uh, that's this is quite interesting for a first fill bourbon barrel because you're getting the big uh, hit from the wood because it's only a bourbon in it once, and uh, and it's, it's you expect to get a lot more of the bourbony, sweeter type flavors, which we are getting here. But uh, you would think it would have got maybe twenty four years may have been too long, but it quite clearly yeah. hasn't been. 100, as, yeah, hundred percent. Moffat toffees, John. You mentioned earlier on. And there was also whiskey, as John said. Everyone um, previously released seventeen year old, I believe that something with Moffat toffee in the in the title. Trail mix, honey, maple syrup, and orangery. John, it does also mention tangerine again. Our, our good yeah. friend Billy. In finance here in the society is the Dundee United man. Tangerine is mentioned yet again. But I again, you. as John will always tell everyone, those orangey notes and a lot of these Elgin based uh, distilleries is quite common in terms of aroma and even on the palate. So, orangery, tangerine peels, and as John's mentioned, everyone, rum toff and burnabrot. Thank you earlier on for the burnabrot description, guys. Uh, stolen and grouchy cherries. Best enjoyed in the boudoir, John, <laughs> as you said earlier. Even in these times, we can... Uh, I don't know if everyone's noticed, but if you look out the window, because, John, we were playing around with our cameras earlier on, everyone. <laughs> John is literally back in his Scottish home up north here. Um, I've not got a great background in terms of the society full room here, but you can at least see some of our original bottles that John um, has done some tastings with and masterclasses with over the years. Some of the original bottles, point one, all in our cabinet here. Uh, and I'm sure you're all enjoying at home. John, superb. Again, number four, 35, has just led us up delightfully and a really more mature one at 24 years. I just think it's been a, it's been incredible so far. You know, it's uh, the, the, the whiskies have just been tremendous. Michael, who uh, messaged earlier about the Burnambrot, I know he's experienced these whiskies before because of what I explained earlier, Dean. I don't know if you actually managed to get a bottle, Mike. You can let us know. I know you were after a bottle of this 35. Um, but, uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic uh, mix here of different flavour profiles, you know. Uh, and everybody, as I say, will be getting something different. And thanks so far for all your comments. If anybody, I sometimes ask as we go through which whiskey, you know, the, the audience or the members have preferred. But, I mean, it's... Yeah. I yeah. don't think it's possible to do it this time because there's such a different variety and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't pick one. 
yeah the variety of casks john the variety of casks and yeah, yeah. just the the, the the flavor profiles just you hitting right off the bat the number two that htmc peated um number 10 yeah i think we all need ladies and gentlemen and everyone who's listening in with that is something at home when you're doing your own tastings at home in these times over the last few months where we've been the fortunate to have access to some of these gorgeous flavor profiles as john mentioned earlier on today it's not common to use a more kind of peatier whiskey early in the lineup but why not when you know that you've got an abundance of rich and different types of flavor profiles to follow it john that worked beautifully earlier that six-year-old number the second whiskey of the day there um cast number I 10 I, I know i know many of you have kept a little bit back of that second whiskey the number 10 so when you get when we get to the last one, you can compare the two. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So number so, for the final, the final wee beastie, John. Yeah, absolutely. Now this one here, this is extremely interesting because this uses the same uh, PPM on the peat as another distillery in Ira on the south coast, which actually ends up very differently as a new make spirit. So it just kind of demonstrates how the process can make a big difference to the raw materials, you know. So this particular distillery has got cooler wort, slower fermentation, tall stills, thinning line arms, and it creates all together a lighter style of peated whiskey than the, yeah. big, the big beast from the south coast. You know? And also a distillery, John, that produces um, so, th th probably the most the most spirit that contributes towards peated. Oh, yeah. Um, they, they produce so much annually, and and but, but to be able to get access to, to cash strength single malt is 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 difficult. And so we're, again, we're blessed to have another example from this distillery, as John said. Um, Eleven years, John, fifty-eight point eight percent. Yeah, absolutely. Twentieth of February. 09, you know, so and uh, 308 bottles from a hogshead uh, after only 11 years. See what I mean? That's uh, quite incredible, you know, how, how, we've, how we've done so well on that one in terms of what we actually got out of it. This distillery was kind of rebuilt in the 70s and it was refurbished again nine or ten years ago. And uh, some people accuse the distillery of being too auto fully automated, one man with a button, you know. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if any of you out there, particularly outside of these islands in Europe, know what a shift is. A shift is a working spell for a workman somewhere. So a shift would be like. Mm. Eight to five, or another shift would be five to twelve, and stuff like that. So, so the period that you watch the shift, well, I did a tour of this distillery with the manager yeah, a few years ago, and he said to me, he said to the group, he said, "You know, it makes me angry when people say we are just one man with a button because we've got three shifts. There's three men with a button." <laughs> yeah, but 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 just 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 to let you know, well, teamwork, man, John. When it comes in the whiskey industry, teamwork. It's like people oh, coming together and working as part of a team is without sending uh, cliché. I think John's onto something there yet again. Yeah. And and one of one of the famous managers for this distillery only retired a few years ago. I think in a hundred years I've only had seven managers or something. It's quite incredible. But the manager now has just announced he's going to be the manager at the other distillery on the island owned by that company. Yeah. So he's moving, he's moving down. You just need to remember to turn left instead of right when he comes out of his driving mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so let's see what we're folks. So, John, to, to a lot of people at home, especially some of the newer members who have been joining over the last few months, the PT whiskies can sometimes, especially at cast strength, can sometimes be quite intimidating. Um, but how many people have you met, especially not only at your tastings, but throughout friendships and, and meeting people and coming together? 
uniquely as friends over a whiskey where they'll say, oh, yeah, I never used to previously appreciate peated whiskies, but now it's my favorite. Yes. Um, yes. If you can let everybody know, like, like in terms of peat, John, and that final whiskey there, it can sometimes be quite intimidating to a lot of folks at home who are new and to the fortune of having access to cash strength whiskey in front of them. But take time with it, right? Again, it comes down to that beautiful element of taking time. Absolutely spawning. And you, you, you must get a lot in the vaults. People, people, our membership is gradually getting younger. Delighted to see there's a lot more women now than there was 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Some, I mean, and, and there are no rules anymore about who likes peated whiskey. Nor it's, should there ever be, right? I, I, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you could kind of predict who would like peated whiskey no more. And Steen was saying there, some of the, the ways to appreciate whiskies that you're not so sure about is to eat it with some, some food, some snacks, and get used to yeah. it that way. 100%. We did, we did a tasting in London uh, two years ago. There was a, a bunch of blokes who were clients of the company we were doing for. It was a corporate tasting. And they said they don't like peated whiskey. We asked them to go over to a, there was a fish stall and get some raw fish, oysters or something, kind of what. Come back yeah. with that and try this distillery. Without, and and they, they, they thought, my God, what have we discovered, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. and, and eventually through that, they'll end up enjoying the whiskey on its own, no doubt. But it took away the fear. It took away the fear. Yeah. Used yeah. To, so many, many years ago, I used to, people say to me, oh, I hate whiskey. I tried it once. It was awful. And when you dig a bit deeper, it turned out they were an 18 years old birthday party. And at three o'clock in the morning, when every other alcoholic drink in the party was gone, someone gave them some blended whiskey and they took it and didn't like it. And, and that was a taste they remembered in the morning. So didn't drink it again. <laughs> and so far, I've worked out there's about 200,000 people at that party. But, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but once you, but once you actually get past that fear, you know. And well, actually, said Michael, Michael Tank O'Donovan there. Yeah, 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 there he goes, and and, and Mike, Mike and a few of them at Sashin Astram Whiskey Club are like that now. Yeah, we didn't drink any poopied whiskey five years ago, but yeah. now fully appreciate it now. Yeah, Mike's one of our younger members. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, yes, Mike. And uh, and uh, so I, I think that. People are beginning to put, see in the younger generation. There's a kind of culture of connoisseurship now. Yeah, yeah it's want, growing, John, isn't it? It's growing. They want to taste all the different drinks, and they want to know why they taste like that, not just they taste differently. So it's given us a great opportunity for our members to take them through different flavors and explain why. You know, yeah, yeah. and you know, it's it's wonderful. Absolutely, John, and and, and, and everyone. Sorry for sounding a little bit uh, brandy or. Um, <laughs> Or a sales pitch here, but I think for anybody, it's more so coming from people that's come to speak to us at tastings, John, and members that you meet when they, when they, when they start joining the society, they get a feel of things and they start opening up, they start opening up their minds with regards to not only the whiskies and single cast spirits they can get access to, but you know the type of people that you can come across and meet that you that you wouldn't always that you wouldn't always meet. And in, in these times now, as John just said, everyone, the um, it's absolutely crucial to know that. You know, take your time, but there is a growing interest around the the, the foodie, the drinks, the the whole spirits industry for refined niche profiles. And I don't mean to be calling out um, and claiming facts here, but the society John can lay claim to be pioneering and a real force for good in the industry when it comes to establishing flavor profiles of a product that is as as good as any in the world. We would argue. Um, those of us lucky to be able to enjoy whiskey and single cast spirits, but uh, absolutely flavor profile, as you just mentioned there, flavor profiles, there is a growing market amongst younger, um, younger consumers, but more importantly, people that you get to meet from young to old John and to everything in between. That is whiskey in a nutshell, right? The people that I, meet I, I think that's absolutely, absolutely right, Dean. No, there's no doubt about it. And together unique. I mean, you know, I was asking people, I mean, Nadja and Jens are saying that 53 is still a bit 
but to pity for them. I'm, I'm actually trying this whiskey now, and I think this is sweeter than the number 10 was. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? mm -hmm. Yeah, John, incredible. That Right, by the way, our master ambassador there, ladies and gentlemen, they, they, um, yesterday at the tasting at the gathering here at the vaults, uh, there was a couple of there was a couple of folks coming from Norway uh, and Molde area. There was someone coming from the Heidelberg area, just outside of Heidelberg in Germany, uh, Sweden, and then some local members. All at this little tasting that we done, John, as part of one of our master classes, and exactly that we used the fifty three as one of the uh, the whiskies yesterday, and that was what that was t the member that I'm referring to. I don't want to call out his name. I've only just met him, but him and his partner they were both the exact same. They're like, wow. We've only been members since just before lockdown. We've not been able to access the venue, but this this 53, everything you just said there, Dijon, in terms of the sweetness to it, even possibly richer and sweeter than the, the second whiskey today, number 10, they, they were the, the exact same with them, John. They had only recently started getting into their peated whiskies, and they said, wow, once you get past the peat, the sweetness, the richness, and the decadent arrays of like fruity and estuary parts to it, they were loving it. They were fantastic. Only just met them yesterday, John. And again, what do we say about whiskey? You meet people and it transports you into storytelling over whiskey. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic because, I mean, that, um, I can understand that. That, that, that once that, once people talk, once you get past the peak, but it's not just getting past the peak, it's trying to understand what you're getting besides the peak. I mean, I'm getting some, a little bit of citrus in there even, you know. I'm, yep. getting, I'm getting sweetness, I'm getting certainly the smokiness and coal tar and all the rest of it, but I just think that's absolutely one. And I tell you what, it belies its strength. Yeah. Uh, what did you say that was? You're looking at what? It's close to 60, 58.8%. That's the other thing, folks. Sometimes you'll get 58% alcohol whiskey and you'll think, oh, that's fantastic the way it is. And other times you'll get 52%, think, oh, no, I'll put a bit of water in that. No, there's no golden rules, you know? There's no, there's no, uh, like, reference you can look up for that sort of thing it's a very personal thing you know, the other thing is as well is that happened to me earlier this year i had an s bought of smw whiskey from distillery 121 and i already had drank half of it in the, in the preceding months and i got back to this evening and i poured it on and it blew me away i thought this is fantastic this is the best whiskey i've had this year now why didn't i think that when i was drinking it earlier i thought it was good but this Time blew me away. And it just shows that at different times you'll get a different experience from the whiskies that you drink. Uh, and that's the same thing that happens in your brain. If you have a wonderful experience and you remember that aroma and flavour, then that will take you back there forever. And that's why sometimes you get notes like my granny's kitchen at Christmas and yeah. tasting notes, you know. I was on a tasting panel once. And Ewan Campbell, our spirits manager, was the chairman that day. And I said to him, oh, Ewan, I'm getting leather from an old car. He said, yeah, very good, John. What is the model of the car? And it's not as daft as it sounds, because what he detected was, if he's got a memory working in there and I can drag it out of him, it's going to oh, make yeah. an interesting tasting and just leather from an old car. And yeah. as it transpires, my brother-in-law who's visiting me here tomorrow, actually, in Argyle, has got a 1953 Rolls-Royce. So that's what I was thinking about. So, you know, don't be worried at all about opening up your mind to those flavours and aromas and, and, and let, let it wash over you, you know? Yeah, again... And, and, oh, and, and Kel and, Kelvin from Hong Kong! Great ah, to see you. Kelvin. Best wishes, Kelvin. Slan Java. Slan Java. What time is it there, Kelvin? It must be pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, John, finishing up with that wee beastie there in the end, wee beastie is not the appropriate word, actually. It's uh, it's as sweet as you like. I think and so. That, I think so. And, that, and that's got a good amount of peat to it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so. I mean, and I love the name as well. Storm tossed kelp on an Isla beach, so it kind of helps to take you back there, you know. Because a lot, a lot of, a lot of people, um, you know, like I want, I want, I want that memory thing I was talking about. So that's an indirect tasting note. 
is yeah, hundred percent associative memories. Everyone get, get play around with all of that. It's, it's, it's and also sometimes, Dean, you look at the tasting notes and you think, I'm not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then you taste it, and it's wonderful, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Um, it's definitely not whiskey flavored condoms and skunk yeah. rope. Oh, that's that's for sure. But again. Yeah. Of an adventurous society, adventurous play notes. We just like going on a journey together, all together, don't we? Where's Patrick? Patrick from Sweden. Hi, Patrick. Good stuff. Cheers, Patrick. Here at the Gothenburg. So, any, 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 any questions or comments, folks? Fire away. We've got a few minutes left. Hi, Kim. Great stuff. Yeah, Sunday versus Friday evenings after work, Kim. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Just shows you, yeah. It's good John, to hear. We, need to, we need to put that into the tasting notes of some, I know, some I know. coming whiskey. Sunday it's versus good. Friday evenings after it's just, work. It's just good to hear that somebody's working, Kim. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... so Yep. For everyone at home, John, with the online members room again, it's just a little shout yeah. out. But they'll all be able to, we can all access it via our website on smws.com. And you're looking for one on one of the main pages, you'll find it on blog members room, um, bringing members together, articles and educational pieces to read uh, with Richard Goslin heading up some stunning new unfiltered footage that we're going to be providing digitally and um, monthly to members, forthcoming, incoming podcasts, outturn bottle reviews. And as John was mentioning earlier on, everyone, the, the virtual pub sessions, John, are a good... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, some of us can't be together, but even just speaking to you today, a perfect example, Absolutely. getting together over the times that we're in in terms of technology, rewatch, rewatch purple uh, virtual pub sessions to celebrate Scotland's whiskey festivals. And, folks, uh, we are hoping... By the time we get through to late October, November, that we're actually going to be coming, be able to come and see some of you again, yeah. face to face for tastings. I'm trying to arrange some down in England. Some already have been arranged in England. We're trying to do the same here. I know that we're trying to do it across Europe and abroad. So hopefully we might start to get back to normal. But this this whole experience has given us such a, a warmth. That I think we may continue this into the future because it's allowed us yeah. to reach out to members across the world. It's Mark essential, John. Yeah, and in the, in the positive times we're in with access to technology and the more democratization of equipment, we've all got access to it, uh, those of us fortunate, and, and been able to utilize that equipment. Why not? You know, I, I would never be able to get to you where John is, everyone in Scotland, in, in, in under two hours today, never mind, you know. So being able to instantly log on and speak to John and share share some whiskies with it with our with our master maestro, everyone. That's what we can do in these times. And why not? But by the way, John, we're definitely we're definitely only tasting today. I can't wait to get back in the virtual pub. Absolutely, absolutely. By the virtual way, pub, also on the 17th of September, particularly for you folks in Europe, on the 17th of September for a couple of hours. Scotland is going to be back in Europe again. Yes. And we've got a cross Europe tasting where some of the bottles we're tasting will be exclusive to your country in Europe. EU, EU exclusive EU exclusive gathering tasting, yes. John. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Diane. It was great to have you on board there. Cheers, Diane. Yeah, we don't we, we not. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it. I want to tell you, I want to tell you a little. Dean, have you got any more to say or? No, I think that other than just thank you all. And in these times now, being able to utilize equipment to speak to people from near and far, more important than ever. Sure. Um, all together, hashtag all together SMWS for all of you that are following online. Um, but John, absolute pleasure yet again. I'll be seeing you in person sometime soon. Hope so. Let me just raise a wee toast to you all before you go. I've got a simple little toast, this one. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, love makes the world go round. 
Whiskey makes it go round a little faster. Slanger. Slanger. Cheers, John. Cheers, team.